What's up everyone, welcome back, Patrick here. In this next video, we are told that the endpoints for the radius of a circle are at negative four and two and eight and negative six, and we have to find the endpoints of the diameter of this circle. So there's actually gonna be two solutions to this as a heads up, so let me show you what's happening visually. So negative four, which is here, and two, so here's the endpoints of the radius, and then we have eight and negative six. This is not to scale, just a rough drawing to show you what's going on. So this here would represent the radius of the circle. So notice in this case that the reason why there's gonna be two solutions to this is because the radius can either, or the center of the circle can either be here, or here, right? Whenever we have a circle, the radius is always from the center to one of the edges of the circle. So if we take this line here, let me redraw it here, just sort of zoomed out. Let's pretend it's the same line. Well, notice if this is the center of the circle, then the circle is gonna look like that, and then the endpoints of the diameter is going to be here, right? That's what we're going to be solving for. So if we make this be the center of the circle, then the endpoint of the diameter is going to be out here. But we can also make this be the center of the circle. So drawing this line out again, if we let this be the endpoint, or uh, sorry, if we let this be the center rather, of the circle, and this be the endpoint of the diameter, and then we draw the circle like that, then the other endpoint of the diameter is going to be out here, right? It would be somewhere out here. So there's going to be two solutions to this. So let's, uh, let's first do the case where this is going to be the center of the circle. So it's going to look like that, and then the other endpoint of the diameter is going to be out there. So if that's the case, notice that this is the endpoint, right, which is the negative four and two, and then this here, this eight and negative six would be the midpoint. And then we have to solve for the endpoint. Now, just in general, we know to get a midpoint, this is the formula. We sum up the x values of the endpoints divided by two, we sum up the endpoints of the y values of the endpoints and divide by two. And so another way to write this is the x value of the midpoint is going to be x1 plus x2 divided by two. Then the y value of the midpoint is gonna be y1 plus y2 over two. So we've done a question like this before where instead of given being given the two endpoints of a line segment, we're given the endpoint and a midpoint. And the way we worked with that question before, which I highly recommend you watching, before watching this video if you haven't, is that we made a new equation here. So we cross multiplied. Like that. And then we isolated for the x2, so we had two times the x value of the midpoint minus x1, right? So instead of solving for the x value of the midpoint because we're given the midpoint and another endpoint, we're solving for the x value of the other endpoint, so that's what we isolated for. So that's exactly the same formula we're gonna be using here. So let me write that out over here. Right, that's gonna give us the x value of that other endpoint that we're looking for over here. We're gonna be solving for x, y. Actually, this is gonna be like x2, y2 to relate it back to this formula over here. And then this here is x1, y1, and then this is the x value of the midpoint, the y value 
of the midpoint. If we do the same thing with the y mid formula, we would end up getting y2 equals 2 times the y value of the midpoint minus y1. Okay, so we just have to plug it in all the values here. So starting with the x value, so we'd have 2 times the x value of the midpoint, which is 8, minus the x value of the endpoint, which is negative 4. So be careful, put that in brackets. So this would be 16 plus 20, or 16 plus 4 rather, which gives us 20. So this point here is going to have a coordinate of 20, and the y value would be the y value of the midpoint minus the y value of the endpoint, which is 2, which would be negative 12, minus 2, which would give us negative 14. So this point here would be 20 and negative 14. And then you could check your answer. You could take 20 plus negative 4, which would give us 16, divided by 2 would give us 8. Negative 14 plus 2 would give us negative 12, divided by 2 would give us negative 6. Right, so that's one of the solutions. And that's the case when we treat this as the center of that circle that we're looking at. But then we could also look at the other case where we're going to treat this as the center of the circle. So this would rotate like this, and then the other endpoint that we'd be solving for would be out here. And we would treat this then instead as the midpoint, and then this here would be x1 and y1. This would be the endpoint, this would be the midpoint, this would be the other endpoint that we're solving for. So that would be the other case. So if we do it like that, same formula we're going to use is just now we're going to have the x value of the midpoint, which is negative 4, minus x1, which is 8. This would be negative 8 minus 8 which would give us negative 16. And then we'd have 2 times the y value of the midpoint, which would be 2 uh, minus negative 6. Right? The y value of this endpoint. So that would be 2 plus 6, which would give us 8. So the coordinate here would be negative 16 and 8 right here. And notice that these coordinates, they make sense, right? 20 and negative 14. Notice the x value is positive, the y value is negative, and then for this point, the x value is negative, negative 16, and then the y value is positive. Okay, so it's either this, that's the endpoint of the diameter, if this is the center of the circle, or it's negative 16 and 8 if we treat this as the center of the circle, and that's why there's two solution.